Hello everyone, welcome to the School of Abundance. I'm your host, Sean Q. And I'm curious, have you ever found yourself expanding into new levels of your business or your life, and yet that hidden gremlin, we all know as imposter syndrome, rears its ugly head, slowing you down, paralyzing you, or even stopping you from sustaining that growth. Or maybe you've even had a client who has a dream in their soul but for some reason, they haven't been able to manifest it, make it a reality. Well, in today's episode, I'm interviewing quantum success coach, purpose partner, and world traveler, Malvina Mesler, who's going to show us how to really tap into flow so we can understand the energetics of successful living and successful business. We're also going to explore one powerful exercise you can walk your clients through that will reveal secret subconscious stories and beliefs that may be limiting them or holding them back. I've been doing this every morning for a while and it's been so helpful. If you're live with me, go to put hashtag team live. If you're on the rerun, go to put hashtag team rerun. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Let us know where you're tuning in from and what kind of work are you? What kind of coach are you? Uh, what kind of work are you doing today and what kind of coach are you? Now, if this is your first time, I'm your host, Sean Q. I am an abundance coach, a high ticket sales trainer, and a seven figure launch strategist. And I help coaches like you live more abundantly so you can coach more powerfully, change more clients' lives, and change the world. Now, I wanna check in. How are you feeling? Take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Go ahead and slow yourself down. Maybe put your hand on your heart. And give yourself a moment to center yourself. You know, every morning I've been waking up at around five in the morning and it's been really interesting because one of the very first things I do is about 30 minutes of working out in yoga. And the very next thing I've been doing is journaling and using an exercise to kind of set my intention, but also to explore the world within me. You know, when I was in my early 20s, I was trying to outrun a sense of isolation and loneliness that had really grabbed a hold of my personality, my mood, my disposition. And what I found myself doing was I was trying to outrun isolation, but I ran right into perfectionism and overachievement and burnout. And what happened was I began to lose sight of who I was. I was so desperate. I had a vicious desperation to find some solid ground outside of me with the community I was a part of, the leaders I surrounded myself with, uh, the work I was about, the friends I was around. And it wasn't until I realized one small secret that began to really shift things for me, began to shift my own insecurity, my own desire for something outside of me. And that was realizing that the solid ground I had so desperately craved and wanted wasn't outside, wasn't on a distant shore somewhere. It was always within, it was right here. And I had always had access to it. You know, someone once said, the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of the questions you ask yourself. What questions are you asking yourself? Do you, have you found yourself in the same space where you're trying to outrun something and you're running into the arms of something even more toxic or just as toxic for you, just as abusive for you? Let me know in the chat. The quality of your life will be determined by the quality of the questions you ask yourself. So I've been doing this exercise and I've been journaling every morning. So I do my 30 minutes of yoga and I do this journaling exercise. And what's been really powerful is uncovering and identifying the secret subconscious beliefs that I still held on to, that were still slowing me down, still limiting me. Maybe you already know let me know in the chat if this is true. Maybe you already know there are some beliefs that you're holding on to 
for dear life because it's what you needed in the moment, but they're no longer serving you. Or maybe there are stories you keep telling yourself every single day. And maybe they served you at one point, but they don't anymore. How many of you, let me know in the chat, maybe if this is you, you have felt like there's something inside of you just holding yourself back. The exercise I've been doing and I want to share with you will help you uncover that. This is the exercise. So what I've done is I take a journal and I've written on one page when I was five years old, dot, dot, dot. And then on another page, I've written when I was 10 years old, dot, dot, dot. And then the next page when I was 15 years old, the next page when I was 20 years old, the next page when I was 25 years old, the next page when I was 30 years old. I leave them blank. And each morning, I focus on just one of these times in my life. When I was five years old, what did I believe about family, about protection, about security, about myself? What did I really desperately need that I wasn't receiving when I was five years old? And where did I go find it? Oftentimes, we will find what we need. If we need love and we're not receiving it in a healthy way, we're going to go find love and it may not be the best for us. If we need hope, if we need community, if we need belonging, we're going to find it it may not be as healthy for us. And so I was asking myself, I asked myself when I was five years old, what did I really need that I wasn't receiving and where was I finding it? When I was five years old, who was around me and what beliefs about the world were they handing to me that I just accepted as true? And I just take some time, go inside and explore what was happening in those different times of my life. And what I've uncovered is, wow, and what you'll uncover if you choose to have the courage to step into this exercise are some of the things that showed up when I was five that still show up today. It allows you to reveal where some of your beliefs and your stories started from. What about when you were 10, or 15, or 20? What about 25 or 30 or 35 or 40, however old you are? Begin to identify what were the stories that were handed to me and do they still serve me? Are they still showing up for me? Can you see, are you getting how taking a moment to reflect inside, going within, will allow you to understand yourself better? And I fully believe this. Somebody put this in the chat if you're watching live. Self-awareness breeds, births self-control. It gives you more options and choices to heal the story, to change the story, to reshape the story. Self-awareness breeds self-control. So as you're processing this, as you're trying to go to that next level, to expand in your life, ask yourself, what bags am I still holding on to that I was given when I was five or 10 or 15? What am I still dragging along that's holding me back? I was in a conversation once with a, uh, a, a boat speed racer. So they had this massive boat, super thin, and they were going like super fast. And he told me something. He said, just one small piece of kelp if it attaches to the motor or the spinny thingy, I don't know what it's called, it will slow you down by up to 30 miles an hour. One small piece of kelp. And so what these boat racers do is they examine their boat and they ask themselves and they search for all of the seaweed that may have attached itself between races. What's the seaweed that may be slowing you down? I encourage you, do this exercise, process this exercise, and I guarantee it will reveal some things that once removed, once shifted, once reshaped, may allow you to speed up.